Right, this demonstration is um, of, for a speaker split. Once again, we are using a cadabric specimen, um, which we will fit with respect. Um, to do a speaker splint, I would just ask you to watch the application of the lateral splint video first because that gets us to this stage. So this stage is we've uh, put stirrups on, we pat it between the toes, um, we have put the circular tubing net on and we've got our layer of um, soft band conforming orthopaedic bandage on at this point. Now for a speaker splint, when do we use a speaker splint? We use a speaker splint if we want to uh, apply some st stabilisation above the elbow. A lateral splint has to be below the elbow, but if we've got, say we have a fractured humerus in a very young animal that we want to um, treat with external coaptation, we have managed those with um, a speaker splint, um, fractured shoulder blades, um, dislocated elbow, we could um, speaker splint the elbow in extension once it's reduced. Some controversy is whether you need to do that or not, um, but if you have, um, or not controversy, but differences of opinions as to whether you need to use a speaker splint for a dislocated elbow. But fractured scapula, uh, minimally displaced fracture of the humerus and maybe a young animal, or any injury, as I said before, above the elbow. Now, when you are applying a speaker splint, don't do what I did when I first applied one, and I was doing it on my own, and the dog was lying in that position. I thought I did a fantastic job and the dog stood up and it was walking around in this position. All right, so as you're applying the speaker splint, you do need your trusty assistant um, to hold the leg parallel to the table in the position that it needs to be when it's finished. All right, thanks, Colt. Now, this is a medium-sized dog, so I'm actually going to use um, several thicknesses of cotton wool for the padding at the top here. So I've used soft depth band on the most distal segment. I'm using thick layers of cotton wool um, on the most proximal part. I want that to come over the front of the shoulder. We have the bottom leg either forward or all the way backwards. I prefer it to be all the way forward. We want the, the padding to go past the midline up the top here. Probably a little bit light on the padding. Um, it'd be nice to be a bit thicker, but in the interest of this demonstration, we'll just stop there. So we've got padding at the top, we've got padding distally. We'll now come to our next layer, which is, once again, is the conforming material. Um, what have we got here? Oh, that's not it. Um, we'll use this stretchy one. All right, so this is a last elastic conforming bandage. Same as with the lateral splint, we start distally. Toes are just here. And just unwind it without too much pressure again, keeping just a 15 degree bend at the carpus. You really do need an assistant for this one. When I get to the elbow, I tend to figure an eight around the elbow a little bit. We've got the donut underneath the soft band. Now when we get to this part, we need to go over the body and we're going to be zigzagging. So I'm going from behind the elbow, forward. I might just have to get you to pull. Now I've got another bandage here I can use. Just pause that there for a minute. I'm going to go and get myself a bigger bandage. So I just went and got myself a little bit more bandaging material here. I'll have to go another way to follow suit. So from behind the elbow, forward, around the body, and then in front of the elbow, towards the back, and then once again, behind the elbow, and we crisscross it so the whole lot gets covered. So from behind the elbow to in front of the elbow. This does use a lot of material. Um, when you're doing the estimate, you need to um, make sure that you estimate sufficient cost for all this material, plus the fact the animal is nearly invariably is anaesthetized. I'm just adding another roll here. Once I'm happy that I've got good coverage, I will go from in front of the elbow to the back there. To the front again. And I'll just go looking for any bit that I may not have covered, which is the front of the shoulder here. So you want to make sure this again is not too tight. These animals do have to breathe. Okay, so I'm quite happy. That I've got all my padding well covered here with a conforming material, so we'll finish that off there. Okay. 
Okay, and then the final layer. Um, again, I'm using vet wrap. Some people would use elastoplast. Don't do what I'm doing. Have this pre unrolled before you get to this point. Starting distally, and we're just following suit. This is just holding it all in place. Again, you have your assistant. Oh, just cancel that bit. We've forgotten one very important bit, and that's the splint, isn't it? So at this point, we will get our splint material. And once again, you can use the thermoplastic or the thermo resin. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use the thermoplastic. So we will put that over the midway point. And I will do this in layers. I'm going to cut that. And I want it to finish just a few millimetres proximal to where the padding is. So you want at least, it depends what you're trying to do. If you want to stabilise a fracture, you might use more splint material than you might if you were just trying to hold the elbow in extension after having reduced an elbow luxation. Okay, we want to fan it out over top of the shoulder. There's our third layer. If we had a fractured humerus, we definitely want to make sure that the point of that shoulder is included in this splint material. So that will get the job done for this guy, I think. So I'm going to do that in individual layers. We'll get you to pause there. I'm going to go and boil some water for that and I'm going to put some gloves on. So we'll stop there for a minute. All right, so I've cut the thermoplastic splint to a length where it goes over the midline. Um, and it um, comes down to just short of where the padding is, only just short. Um, the amount of layers will vary depending on how much stability you want, size of the animal, etc, etc. We're just going to do three layers here for this demo. Alright, I'm coming over here into some freshly boiled water, thanks to Ruth. Um, have some instruments ready. Doesn't take long to go soft. Okay, I think that's nice and soft there. So I'm just going to do this layer by layer. Yes, it does make the um, underneath bandaging a bit wet, but um, because we're using hydrophobic layers, it does dry out very quickly. Again, I have my assistant holding things um, in a position that I want, making sure that that leg is um, parallel to the body, so this needs to be nice and flat, no divots that will cause pressure sores. Let's go for our next layer. Put the third layer in there as well. Definitely needs to be boiling water fresh out of the kettle. Um, as soon as it loses temperature, you don't get that nice, soft, malleable splint material. Found that out from experience as well. And we want to fan this out at the top. Again, it doesn't want to be over top of the um, padding, just near the padding, molding it around the elbow region. And that would ideally come all the way down the leg, but I'm just a bit short on material for this demo. Let's go for our third layer. One end was sitting out of the water, so it's not soft yet. So if we, when we do the front, as I said before, make sure that you do include the point of the shoulder, especially if you have got a fracture that you're trying to stabilize of the humerus. Make sure that fits nicely around the point of the elbow there. And if I got to this stage and thought, no, that, that, that's, that's not gonna be any good, I just pull this layer back off and throw it back in the hot water until I'm happy. But I think that looks pretty good. My trusty assistant has held the dog's leg in a good position. Um, and if you just come around here for a minute, with this stuff, if you end up with an ugly point like that that you worry causes problems, just cut it off. Just get your scissors and, and cut it off. Um, rather than pulling the whole thing off, I'm just going to sneak. Yeah. So, mm, didn't do a very good job there. Let's just round that off. 
let's try and take all these little points off here that might cause grief or rubbing all right we'll, we'll pause there while that sets ready to go so again we've just waited a little while until that has set I have not gone over this layer with a conforming layer. I've done that manually while we were applying it. So at this point, we'll just roll up the tubing net at the bottom. Um, and now at this point, I have made my cast a little bit too long, so I can't roll the padding up over the top. So I either just accept that, or I just come in here and I just cut that split material just a little bit shorter. So that when we do roll this up, we've just got a nicer rounded rolled edge to the distal aspect of the cast, just so it's less likely to cause rub marks on those toes. Again, we've got the toe, just two of the, the middle toes just visible, so we can monitor them for um, swelling. These stirrups get pulled up and stuck down. These stirrups have been used a bit on the previous video, so they're looking a little bit secondhand. Pull up on them firmly like so and now we will put our tertiary layer on same thing again I'm just tucking in that padding around the back of the foot around we go and again just I have pre-unrolled this um, vet wrap this time you could also use elastoplast um, what you can see here is that because um, we have been conscious of where this dog's leg is, it's sitting up off the table. It's not down like that, like the first time I ever applied one. So it's nice and parallel to the ground. We get to the elbow, and once again, we start to um, zigzag or fishtail or um, crisscross. Thank you, the material. So in this case, I'm in front of the elbow. Head towards the back. Again, you don't want it too tight. This dog's got to breathe, but it's also got to be firm. From behind the elbow, forward. So alternating from in front of the elbow to behind the elbow. The underside leg is all, all the way forward, all the way back. Okay, crisscross that again. And we're just trying to cover up all our padding. Take that over here and we'll just cover up the padding there you can tuck that all underneath if you like to make sure that this front edge is a nice soft front edge and we don't get rub marks and I would get a, I would go another roll and I would cover the back up as well but for the purpose of the demonstration I think hopefully you get the idea nice tidy neat crisscrosses makes the bandage look professional it's comfortable to wear and you've got everything covered and you now have um, a splint that uh, is stopping movement at the shoulder and at the elbow and would apply a nice uh, splint to the scapula if it was broken. That's the end.